Oh yes, hello viewers. My name is Nathan Matovu here at Kisa Projects. Remember, Kisa Projects is the home for entrepreneurs located at Koma Amboga of Mokaga along Gaza Road. Today I'm here to show you how to manufacture high quality colored laundry bars of soap. Previously, in our last video, we were showing you how to manufacture a high quality white bar of soap. So, for our productions today, it is how to make a high quality colored laundry bar of soap using blends of two base oils and for our case today i'm going to use palm oil and palm kennel palm kennel oil remember the process for making soap is called saponification and in general terms saponification refers to the grouping of a strong alkaline solution with butter acids to form a salt a strong alkaline solution if at all we are making laundry bar soap will be a combination of sodium hydroxide and water the strong alkaline solution is the combination of sodium hydroxide and water. Hence, fatty acids are carboxylic acids of long aromatic chains. Some are either saturated and some are uh, unsaturated. So those two, the strong alkaline solution combined with fatty acids will give us a salt. And a salt is a finished bar of soap. Soap is a salt of fatty acids achieved through a process called saponification. So, saponification will be the grouping of the sodium hydroxide water solution with fatty acids to form soap. That is the process called saponification. But before we start, or, be, or before you dive into soap production, first of all, you have to know the qualities of a good bar of soap. How will I tell that the product I've manufactured can pass standards either at the national level or at an international, at an international level? We have five main qualities of a good bar of soap, and these include, number one, we have hardiness. Hardiness refers, refers to the firmness of a soap bar. How strong, how firm should your bar of soap be? A good bar of soap should be strong, mild, and durable. As in strong, when you try to compress your soap using your hands, you find out that it's very, very strong. However, not too strong like a piece of wood. It should be strong, but mild with some kind of softness if i try to over compress using force to compress my soap i find some kind of softness into my soap or when i try to dump my soap down on the floor it doesn't make that sound like that one over wood it makes a, a silent a silent sound that one can indicate to me that it is mild or when i'm trying to break it as in to break it into two pieces it doesn't just break like a piece of stick or like a piece of wood with that hard sound. It goes on bending slowly, just like soap. So that's what we call mild and durable. Durable or durability of the soap. The soap should not vary in size after a certain period of time. For instance, if, I'm, if I manufacture my soap today and I weigh it on a digital scale to find out its net weight, and it is weighing, uh, let me say, one kilogram. Even after like a period of 10 years, 5 years, 6 years, 4 years, 20 years, my soap should be remain weighing the same weight of 1 kilogram. If at all it varies, either increase or decreases in size, just know that there is something you did wrong in your production process or there is some imperfections in your, in your formula. That is quite number one which you call hardiness. Number two, we have conditioning. Conditioning refers the amount of moisture left on the skin after after rinsing, after using your soap, either for washing, either for bathing, either for washing utensils, and you rinse your hands or you rinse your skin, your skin should remain oily, not dry. If your skin remains dry, just know that your soap has higher, higher cleansing abilities, or, or your soap is corrosive, or your soap is more of an alkaline than fatty acids, or your soap can still be acidic, or your soap has corrosive additives. Your soap has corrosive additives that we are not saponif saponified. Hence, a good bar of soap should leave your skin oily and not, and not dry. If it leaves your skin oily, just know that your soap has left your skin with some moisture content on it. Our skins were created with some percentage of moisture content on them. In that, even if we don't smear ourselves with Vaseline or with petroleum jelly or with lotions after bathing, our skins should remain oily and not and not dry. So if at all you try to use any kind of product or soap, 
and after using it, after rinsing your hands, it turns your skin dry. Just know that your soap or that product has higher cleansing abilities, to the extent that it's washing off your top moisture content and on your skin. And that whitish layer, kind of dry layer on your skin you are seeing, is the second layer of your skin, which is something not good on your health. That is number two, which you call conditioning. Number three, cleansing. Cleansing comes from the word clean, the bit of the soap to offer the cleaning purposes. A good bar of soap, sh or, sorry, cleansing refers to the bit of the soap to remove oily materials or greasy substances from the areas of, from the areas of application. Remember the soap we are making is laundry bar of soap. Some people can term it as all purpose bar soap because here in Africa we use laundry bar soap almost in on, in all areas of, sorry, for instance, here in Africa, we use laundry bar soap for general purposes. Some people use it for washing clothes or for laundry purposes. Others use it for washing utensils. You can also use it for, for basing. Other people use it for washing their hair. So how am I going to make my soap effective in all those areas of, in all those areas of application? And to give you an example, we have various types of soaps on the market. We have the powdered soaps, we have the liquid soaps, we have the, the also the hair shampoo, even hair shampoo with soap. Uh, we have also bleach. So all those products are used for cleaning. But you may find that you, you can't use powdered soap for bathing. If you happen to use it for bathing, it is very harsh on your skin. It's not effective for bathing. But for washing, it is very okay to use it in washing your clothes, especially those too dirty clothes, all those clothes with too much stains in them. Bleach, the same thing. You can't use it on your skin, but you can use it in laundry purposes, especially for washing white clothes that have strong stains. Uh, shampoo, you can use it on your hair, but it's not good on your, on your skin, even if it's not good on clothes. Some liquid detergents are specified for a, for a particular activity, like liquid hand wash specifically for hands uh, shower gel specifically for bathing we have also the, medic the medicated and toilet soap specifically for the skin but for the laundry bar of soap you can use it in all those areas of application i can use it on my clothes i can use it on my skin i can use it in mopping maybe floor so how am i going to make my soap effective in all those areas of in all those areas of application that one we shall see it practically how you are going to make it effective in all areas of in all those areas of application but how will you tell after manufacturing it that my soap is effective in all those areas of application we can tell simply by just seeing or by just observing the nature of the form produced by our our soap hence we shall subdivide those two qualities of the nature of the form produced by our soap as cream lather and bubbly bubbly lather Cream lather measures the stability of the soap lather, and bubbly lather measures the cleansing abilities of the soap. The higher the bubbly lather percentages of your soap, the higher the cleansing abilities and vice, and vice versa. Hence, the higher the creamy lather uh, percentages of your soap, the lower the cleansing abilities of your soap, and vice, and vice versa. So our round rebar soap should be 50, 50. 50% bubbly lather, 50% cream lather. As in, it can offer the cleansing abilities very well. At the same point, it is user-friendly on my skin as the user of the product. That's why when you try to use powdered soaps for washing, when I get my powdered soap and I put it in water and splash the water, it produces a lot of foam, but that foam has bigger bubbles in, in it. And the foam is totally dry. It's not creamy, creamy at all. So that bubbly lather indicates the higher cleansing abilities of the powdered, of the powdered soap. That's why it is, it offers the cleansing, the cleansing, uh, the cleansing advantages or the cleansing. The, the, it offers the cleansing duty or the cleansing activity. It does the cleansing quickly if compared to the, to the laundry bath soap because it has higher cleansing abilities compared to the laundry, laundry bath soap. So our soap should be both bubbly and creamy and creamy and creamy lather. So those are our five main qualities of a good bar of soap. It should be bubbly, 
it should be creamy, it should be, it should have conditioning, cleansing, and number five is, is hardness. So that is our target for our production, for our production today. If we pass all those five standards, our soap can even pass standards at the either the national or the international level of manufacturing.